Howdy, my name is Nonat, and today I'll be guiding you through the steps of creating a first level champion in Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Champions are very similar to paladins in other role-playing systems. However, in Pathfinder, they have been given much more freedom in their roleplay and character creation options. Typically, paladins have been restricted only to good alignments, and are well known as the goody two-shoes in the party. Sworn to destroy all that is evil, their roleplay is often seen as restrictive or detrimental to the rest of the party. Champions, on the other hand, are a much more general term for the class. To quote page 105 in the core rulebook, Champions are an emissary of a deity. They adhere to a code that holds them apart from others. Champions exist for every alignment. While the core rulebook mostly goes into detail on good alignment champions, you're free to make a champion of any alignment following any deity. These characters will defend themselves and their allies as best as they can, so let's get started and check out what champions have available at level 1. Champions are a primarily combat-focused class, so strength or dexterity are valuable skills. Constitution is also quite helpful for boosted hit points. Almost every ancestry can be used in some way to make an effective champion, since Pathfinder 2nd Edition lets anybody use dexterity instead of strength for certain weapon attacks. However, if you really want to defend the party and tank hits, I'd recommend a dwarf. Since so many skills are important to the champion, almost any background would work, but some good examples would be the guard for strength, the hunter for dexterity, the farmhand for constitution, or the Acolyte for roleplay. Alongside their ability boosts from their ancestry and background, all champions gain a boost to their strength or dexterity they choose at character creation. They also receive four free boosts of their choice. Listed on page 105 of the core rulebook, champions begin with these proficiencies. As usual, feel free to pause the video and jot these down if you're creating your character along with the guide. The first thing any champion must decide is their champion's code. Like I said, the core rulebook only has options for good champions, so that's what I'll be covering here. But feel free to talk to your GM and work with them if you want to make a champion of a different alignment. The champion's code will vary depending on which deity they've chosen to follow, and because I love you guys, I'm going to go over each of them very quickly. Aristeel, god of community, always protect your home, never abandon family. Iomade, goddess of justice, always fight for honor, never refuse a challenge. Torog, dwarven god of the forge, always keep your word, never tell a lie. Sarenrae, goddess of healing, always aid the wounded, never deny redemption. Shailin, goddess of art, always protect the beauty of the world, never destroy art. Caden Kaelean, god of wine, always seek adventure, never waste wine. Desna, goddess of dreams, always explore life, never cause fear. Abadar, god of wealth, always work hard, never steal or pirate. Irori, master of knowledge, always yearn for perfection, never lose control. Nethys, god of magic, always seek more power, never take the easy way. Phrasma, goddess of death, always destroy the undead, never disrespect a corpse. Gazra, god of the wilds, always respect nature, never civilize the wilderness. Calistria, goddess of revenge, always find your freedom, never let someone get away. Gorum, god of battle, always fight fair, never kill the defenseless. Zon Kuthon, god of darkness, always bring pain to the world, never provide comfort. Asmodeus, god of evil, always know your place, never show mercy to your enemies. Norgorber, god of greed, always do whatever is necessary, never reveal your worship. Urgothoa, goddess of disease, always protect the undead, never deny your wants. Rovagug, god of destruction, always destroy, never create. Lamashtu, goddess of monsters, always reveal the flaws of creation, never treat an illness. Whew, so, like I said, you can pick any of these for your champion, as long as your alignment falls under their worship requirements. But the core rulebook only covers good champions. So let's talk about those. Depending on your alignment, you are given a cause. Each cause gives a unique champion's reaction, as well as the lay on hands devotion spell. I'll be covering devotion spells a bit later in the video. Lay on hands is a simple plus 6 hit points, and plus 2 to AC for one round. 
A champion's cause, sadly, isn't really a choice. According to the rules, it depends 100% on your alignment. But if you want to play a neutral good liberator, I don't think the world will end. But remember to always ask your GM first. If a champion is lawful good, they are a paladin. They must always be honorable and respect authority. They are granted the Retributive Strike reaction. When their ally gets attacked, they reduce the damage by 2 plus the champion's level, and they get a free strike against the attacker. If they are neutral good, they are a redeemer. They must attempt to forgive all who do wrong, rather than kill them. They are granted the Glimpse of Redemption reaction. When their ally is attacked, the attacker must make a choice. They either stop their attack entirely, dealing no damage, or the champion's ally reduces the damage taken by 2 plus the champion's level. On top of that, the attacker becomes enfeebled 2 until the end of its next turn. Finally, if the champion is chaotic good, they are a liberator. They must respect each individual's choices and fight for those who want freedom. They are granted the liberating step reaction. When an enemy damages or grabs an ally near the champion, the ally is able to make a free attempt to escape a grapple or resist an immobilizing effect. Afterwards, they can take the step action for free and reduce damage taken from the attack by 2 plus the champion's level. If you've chosen to play a champion of a different alignment not listed here, I'd recommend picking one of these three options that best suits your champion's combat style and personality. If you're playing a chaotic neutral champion based around revenge, the retributive strike reaction would work just fine. Champions have access to a specific weapon depending on their deity. This is their deific weapon. Even if the weapon is uncommon, the champion will still have access to it during character creation. If the weapon is simple, its damage die is also bumped up one step. So a simple deific weapon that is normally a d6 would be improved to a d8. While the rules state that champions have access to their deific weapon at character creation, some GMs may have you start without it. The final say is up to the GM, but the champion should hopefully have their deific weapon sooner in the campaign rather than later. All champions also begin with the shield block general feat, which allows them to use their shield to reduce incoming damage as a reaction, so long as they already have their shield raised. Finally, let's take a look at the feats available to champions at first level. Ranged Reprisal allows the Paladin cause Retributive Strike to be used even with a ranged weapon instead of just melee. It also extends the effect of Retributive Strike in melee to 10 feet away instead of the usual 5. Unimpeded Step allows the Liberator's Liberating Step reaction to be unaffected by any kind of detrimental terrain such as uneven ground or narrow surfaces, so the ally can take the step action no matter what the area looks like around them. Weight of Guilt allows the Redeemer's Glimpse of Redemption to cause targets to become stupefied to instead of enfeebled to. This affects mental abilities rather than physical and causes spellcasting to become far more difficult. The Redeemer can choose between stupefied or enfeebled every time they use the Glimpse of Redemption. The final feat available to champions is the Deity's Domain. This feat stands out from the others as it is the only way champions can gain devotion spells other than Lay on Hands at first level. Devotion spells are magics that are derived directly from the deity that the champion worships. All champions begin with one focus point, and casting any devotion spell will consume one focus point. These points can be regained through a 10-minute prayer to their deity, and certain feats can increase the amount of focus points the champion has. Take note. The champion does not gain new devotion spells every level, and can only acquire new ones through specific feats, such as Litany Against Wrath at 6th level. The Deity's Domain feat grants the champion one of their deity's initial domain spells. All deities in Pathfinder have multiple domains, and the champion may pick any of them. Whichever domain they pick, they acquire the initial spell from that domain. For example, if a champion of Shaylin took Deity's Domain, they could choose from the Creation, Family, 
passion or protection domains. If the champion chose the family domain, they would gain the soothing words devotion spell. Going over every single domain would take way too long, but look forward to a Pathfinder spellbook about this topic in the near future where I explain each spell available to first level champions. And that's about it. Oh boy, this video got away from me. It was supposed to be done a week ago, but that didn't go as planned. Tons of stuff got in the way, and there just never seemed to be enough time. But we got there! Hopefully this video lived up to your expectations and explained all the options available to first level champions. Remember to subscribe if you like what you saw, and to ring the bell to know when the next video goes live. This Thursday, you should expect the Pathfinder Spellbook on Domain Spells, and if you haven't already, go ahead and check out the first episode on Arcane Tan- Cantrips, I'm leaving that in. Arcane Cantrips. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, no nat ones.